We got some breaking news for you today. Another shocker in Capitol Hill. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy dropped out of the race for Speaker of the House. We've been going through this campaign, talking to a lot of members, but the one thing I've always said to earn this majority, we're servants. We should put this conference first. And I think there's something to be said for us to unite. We probably need a fresh face. All right, so McCarthy is out and the House election has been postponed. And obviously right now the GOP is in shambles. Since Speaker Boehner's resignation, McCarthy, he had strongly pitched himself for the position, but he was faced with very stiff opposition from other conservatives who were vibing, vying for the job. Uh, so what does it mean for the Speaker's job? Also, what does it mean for the party itself? Joining me now is a member of the House Freedom Caucus, Representative Dave Brett. Representative Brett, uh, I guess I guess you, uh, you you took a victory lap of sorts, but where does this leave the the Republican Party? Yeah, no, it's it's not a victory lap. It's just normal democracy working its way. I heard the preliminary announcements there. There's a civil war going on. There's no civil war going on. It's called democracy. You have majority rules. You follow the process. The conference after uh, John Boehner stepped down was making huge progress in terms to getting the bottom up. Uh, participation from all members, treating all members equally, uh, getting to what's called regular process. If you have regular process, the budget committee and approach would already be done in April. There would be no government shutdown drama going on. There would be no debt ceiling increase drama going on that you get with uh, the current leadership right before Christmas, two weeks before Christmas, Merry Christmas. We don't want that. We want the American people to do great. We're interested in unifying the party along principles. We're a nation of laws, not of men. And so uh, that's what we're aiming for. And it, the drama coming out of the media is a little too much at some times. Well, a little too much, but in this particular case, it's probably warranted because all the things you said are great sound bites. But what does it really mean? When you say principled, uh, why yeah. wasn't Kevin McCarthy principled? Why wasn't John Boehner principled? What was missing in yeah. their character that you think yeah. uh, the, should, should lead the GOP? Yeah. Easy answer to that. It's, it's not a matter of the men's character. We're not running on personalities. We're running on principle. I sent around 10 points. Uh, various other people have sent around points. We want in writing a commitment to regular order, and that's it. And we didn't get that from some of the candidates. And so what's at stake? Oh, just 19 trillion in debt for the uh, country, 100 trillion in unfunded liabilities. All federal revenues will only go to mandatory spending in 11 years. There will be no money for defense, education, or transportation on the current trajectory. And so that's what's at stake. Uh, there's a lot at stake. Uh, Russia's dropping bombs on Syria right now. What's our messaging on that? We want some strong messaging coming out of the Republican conference. And uh, I think the American people are 60% upside down against our party right now. So we're trying to get it straight for the American people. Uh, it's not about the uh, little horse race up here in D.C. People don't care about that. They want us to get business moving. Small business is getting crushed by Dodd-Frank and uh, over-regulation. And uh, we're trying to get it straight up here but so that Americans can just pursue their lives. Isn't there a sense of irony to that since the, uh, the, the Freedom Caucus has this reputation of, of drawing a line, in a, a line in the sand and not being cooperative, not being willing to compromise. How will anything get done? And of course, John Boehner referred to this on his way out, or at least after yeah. he said, listen, I'm leaving. He slammed the Tea Party pretty hard for selling uh, the American public, particularly their constituents, a bag of goods. Right. Well, if, you, if the media would do its homework, uh, your premise is absolutely incorrect. Last week on the CR, the budget for the United States of America, 153 Republicans voted no. That's not 30 or 40 people. Uh, that's not some small group. 153 Republicans, the majority of the Republican conference, voted against the budget of Republican leadership. That's what can cause a change up in D.C. Not 30 or 40 people like the mainstream press. Uh, that doesn't do reporting, right? You should be writing the news, not doing op-eds. And we need the press to step up and do its job on the facts. And if you want to question me on the facts, I'm all there with you. So let me ask you this then. You're saying there's yeah. a new establishment already because all we've heard is that this is a fight against the anti-establishment and, 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 and the old guard, if you will. 
But you're saying it's already changed. You're already saying that the GOP, for the, for the most part, is, is follows the Tea Party ideology, and this is the way the party wants to go. And you've just got a few uh, hanger-oners, if you will, the old guard from uh, the banners of the world that need to sort of move aside. Nope. Nope, I didn't say that at all. There's no Tea Party ideology or any of this in the mainstream press that I've seen. Uh, what there is is a consensus among the American people that they want solutions. They want free markets, Adam Smith. They want the Constitution, James Madison. Uh, nothing radical in the, in the pillars of what has made this country great. Then why, we want then to return. Why, then why yeah. is it it's so hard right now for, for your party to find a, a leader? Uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, you, yeah. you would think a lot of people would step up and want that job, but we've spent most of the day talking about folks who said, hey, count me out. Uh, no crisis. Uh, the election was called by the Speaker prematurely for today a vote. We have until the 29th. The entire conference, and you can go validate this with anybody out there, the whole conference was making huge progress in moving toward regular order, giving all legislators the ability to bring bills to the floor, uh, not choosing favorites, uh, letting the chairman of committees work their wills, and answer me this, right, to the press, who's in charge of the United States budget today? And the press looks stunned, and they don't have an answer to that. It's five people in a back room so far, somewhere, right? I'm on the budget committee. The budget committee passed a budget that balances in 10 years. Appropriations took it over. That whole process uh, should have been done in April or May. And that's all this government shutdown uh, drama, debt ceiling increase right. drama. That should have all been settled several months ago. Well, I, you know, I do agree. I think the American public will love to see a lot less drama and a lot more things right. done.